it was um Stefan's birthday episode, and I'm pissed. I'm pissed. I don't like Damon anymore. I'm mad at him. He hurt me this episode. I loved Lexi. Loved her. And I knew she was fated to die. I just fucking knew it. I just, as soon as she showed up, I was like, oh, no. They, they introduced this amazing character just to kill her. I, I know it. I know it. Yeah, they did it. Why? So, yeah, I was really, really excited to see another vampire. I knew we would eventually, and I'm sure we'll see plenty more, but I wanted to get an idea of what other vampires were like. And I just, oh, <laughs> I'm so sad. <laughs> I loved her. I loved her immediately. And they had so much chemistry, Lexi and Stefan. So much chemistry. I actually, I wrote here somewhere in my notes. I wrote, uh, they have so much chemistry. I'm immediately shipping these two. Excuse me while I go write some fanfic. <laughs> <laughs> ah, they were great. And for the first time, I, I liked Stefan. I mean, I genuinely liked him. Like, he's been okay. I think I felt pretty neutral about him the first seven episodes. I didn't dislike him, but I didn't like him either. But this episode, when he was with Lexi, I actually liked him. And he seemed to be a lot more fun than I originally thought. Although she did make a comment about how this is like the one day out of the year that they hang out and the rest of the time he's all broody. Yeah, he just seemed like so much fun. I wanted to go party with those two. And then I wrote, oh God, I hope she's not in this episode just to die. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's not because I'm so brilliant. It's just because I've seen so many of these shows. <laughs> you know, it, it actually reminds me a lot of Supernatural. They, they would do that a lot, particularly with female characters, introduce these amazing women just to kill them. Yeah, looking at you, Supernatural. So yeah, it was good to know just a little bit more about vampires that the older they get, the stronger they get. So I wonder uh, if all the other vamps know about their rings. Um, because wouldn't that make them a huge target? Oh, and everyone's got their story straight with the uh, the Inquisition there from the sheriff. I like the sheriff. She's smart. You know, she's not some bumbling idiot. So I really appreciate how smart she is. I forgot that she was Caroline's mom. I called it. The amulet found Bonnie. Damn, I'm good. Again, it's not really that I'm so good. <laughs> it's just that I've seen this stuff a lot. Uh, Jeremy's doing homework. Did he decide that on his own or was that a part of Damon's programming? <laughs> we find out later Damon says that he took away... Uh, Jeremy's suffering. And so I'm guessing if you take away his suffering, then he has no need to act out. So yeah, he's doing homework and shit. It makes sense. It was awfully selfless of Damon, but he's got a soft spot for Elena. I know he's going to fall in love with her if he isn't already. And then I just wrote, he's so pretty. And I know I was talking about Damon, but I don't know what scene I'm referring to, but oh, he's so pretty. He's just so pretty, but I'm still mad at him. Oh, Bonnie and Elena are so sweet. I really like their friendship. Her witchy powers are pretty strong right from the get-go. You know, it took Willow, like, forever to float a pencil. But, you know, how long is she going to remain a good witch? You know, that kind of power always turns dark. It's, it's hard for me to just be like, oh, cool witch powers, because I've been on this journey with too many characters. So when she floated those feathers, I got the sinking feeling instead of, you know, like the awe that I was supposed to be feeling in that moment. She will be a good ally. I'm not sure when we're going to bring her into the fold, but I imagine that she's going to be an ally. But it's true, you know, whenever we have somebody who is who is, becomes incredibly powerful, particularly witches, it tends to go badly. Let's put it that way. And I was thinking... About her grandmother, I was like, oh, God, I hope they don't kill her grandmother just to, like, make her go dark, you know? And this time I'm looking at you, Joss Whedon. I feel so sad for Caroline. Just in general, I really don't have anything else to say. I just feel sad for her all the time. And I think they're setting up a relationship between her and Matt, and I'm into it. I like it. They seem like a good match. I feel bad for him, too. You know, both of them I feel really sorry for. So maybe, yeah, maybe we'll we'll get a nice, a nice storyline with those two. 
So, yeah, then I wrote, oh, no, what is Damon going to do? Don't tell me he's going to get Lexi killed. And why does he want to solve the vampire problem that he created? Everything was fine until you got here, Damon. You know, I just don't get it because I thought he was an agent of chaos. I thought that, you know, he's got some kind of beef with his brother that seems to be going on for a while and apparently stems from the Catherine thing. So it's been going on for like 150 years, apparently. But, um... Yeah, I thought he just wanted to show up and wreak a little havoc. Well, okay, yeah, maybe it's Elena. Yeah, maybe he's already in love with her. Because I thought, yeah, he just wants to show up, wreak a little havoc, and then you would think that he would just want to take off. Obviously, he's the main character, so he's not going anywhere. But I just, the the whole, oh, I'm going to solve the vampire problem, right? The writers want him around, and I get that. But why would he, the character, want to stick around? If the heat's getting turned up because he killed too many people, then why don't you just blow town? But I think it's Elena. I think he's probably already in love with Elena, and so he's not going to leave because of her. And I think that he, you know, took away Jeremy's suffering for Elena. Just the way that he was phrasing that, like, I took away his suffering. He didn't need to take away... She didn't ask him to take away his suffering. She asked him to just make him forget about the vampire stuff and also to just accept that Vicky has left town. Ah, human blood. Finally, somebody thought to go to the blood bank. Actually, she said she has a supplier. uh, And that made me laugh. (laughs) But also, I would be worried that someone was killed for that blood. You know, I I would be worried about blood dealers, you know. Why would three badass vampires want to go to some high school party at a grill? That seems lame even to me. You know, obviously Damon set up the whole thing and I knew that he was trying to set up Lexi. I was hoping he would not be successful, but I had a bad feeling. But it was just kind of weird how... You know, he's like, hey, let's go to this party. And and then Lexi's all into it. It just seemed like, why? Why not go to New York or something? Why not do something actually fun? When Bonnie played the best friend card, I mean, she wasn't playing a card. But, you know, she, when she said, um, she tells Elena that, you know, she's a witch and shows her her powers. And Elena's like, why did you, why did you show me? And she said, because you're my best friend and I can't keep secrets from you. Oh, that hurt. That hurt. I feel bad for Elena too. I feel bad for everybody. I literally feel bad for everybody except for Damon because he's such a raging asshole on this episode. Oh yeah, I wrote, what is Damon going to do indeed? Responding to a character, but I can't, I can't remember. But yeah, they said basically something like, what's Damon going to do? And I was like, yeah, what is he going to do indeed? He better not get Lexi killed or I will jump through this screen. (sighs) <sighs> and yeah, I wrote, let me guess, Lexi is going to answer the door in her towel. Yep, basically. <laughs> Why do you keep showing up at Stefan's house, Elena? It never goes well. I am really starting to, like I said, I'm starting to like Stefan, and I appreciate that he seems to love Elena for who she is, but it's still sketchy as fuck that she looks exactly like Catherine. And, and, um, Lexi, you know, sees her and she's shocked. And Stefan says she's not Catherine because yeah, that's what I was thinking that she was like Catherine reincarnated or something. And then I was like, oh no, she has to be a descendant. So I'm pretty sure that that's what we're going with. But yeah, it's sketchy that he, like, how does he even know about Elena? Did he come to town to live, visit his uncle or something and then see her? Yeah, but he obviously moved there and, like, went back to high school and everything just to be close. And you know what? Elena never called him out. Of, she never questioned, like, <laughs> why are you in high school? You're 160-some years old. Why are you in high school? He, he looks like he's in his, his 20s anyway, so he doesn't have to be in high school. She never thought that was strange. She's never asked him about it. And then he basically lied to her. You know, he lied to her by omission, but it's still a lie. When he shows up to Elena's house, she she made some kind of comment about how Lexi 
reacted to her. And Stefan just kind of blew it off. When obviously the reason she reacted the way that she did is because she looks exactly like Catherine. I wonder when he's going to tell her. Because he's told her about Catherine, but he hasn't, you know, told her. And by the way, you could be twins. So it was a nice scene when Stefan was telling Lexi, you know, how he feels about Elena. And he was saying all these wonderful things about her, how she's so warm and and everything. I like that the writers are keeping them apart in a way that feels real. And Elena not wanting to be with Stefan, even though she clearly has feelings for him. I appreciate that it feels real that she would say, no, 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 I, I can't get involved in this. Um, and yet <laughs> she really is still talking to him way too much and showing up at his house for no reason. Yeah. But I also like that he's not pressuring her. He's not trying to woo her. He's not trying to, uh, you know, convince her that they should be together. He's just letting her be. So I like that. And then in regards to Lexi and Elena, their little chat, I wrote, I love her. I want them to be gal pals. Oh, my God, if she dies, I'm going to rage. And, oh, I raged. <laughs> I raged. But, yeah, this is how you write a character, man. She felt like a whole person right from the start. You know, right from the moment we meet her, you get a sense of who she is. And you felt like she'd been around for 300-plus years. You know, I, I, I felt like those two... Uh, character Stefan, and, well, all three of them, really. I mean, I felt like they had a history, like they knew each other. It felt, it felt real. And I'm genuinely sad. I'm genuinely disappointed that she's gone. Maybe there's some way to bring her back. Who knows? But I doubt it. it it's really a bummer because she was the first character... Even Damon, I think, took like an episode or two to grow on me. But that was the first character so far that I was like, yes, I love her. I want a whole series about her. I want to be best friends with her. Yeah. We're back at the bar, the grill or whatever. And I said, oh, no, he set her up, didn't he? Yeah, because you could just see where it was going. Um, <laughs> if I told you, it wouldn't be very diabolical. <laughs> that made me laugh. We get to the part with the sheriff and everything, and I and I just wrote, oh, God, about ten times. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. <laughs> Stefan, you better go save your girl. Stefan, dude, use your powers. <laughs> because, yeah, he walks up to the deputy, and the deputy's like, you can't go out there. And he's just like, okay. And he goes around the back or something. No, just use your powers on him. Say, yes, I fucking can go out there. I mean, I know that he doesn't want to use his powers, like, his super speed or whatever. He doesn't want to be obvious in front of people. There had to have been something that he could do. I was really hoping, I knew that this was a setup, but I was really, really, really hoping Stefan would, actually, I, actually, I was hoping that Lexi would outsmart Damon, to be perfectly honest. I was hoping that um, she would just take off. Like, he would set her up, but she would outsmart him and she would get away, but they would know that she's the vampire. So now she's got to leave town. That's kind of what I was hoping would happen, but I just had a terrible feeling that they were going to kill her. I thought she's too awesome to keep around, right? She's too awesome to keep alive. Ugh. And then I wrote you fucking asshole with like 20 exclamation points when, when uh, Damon staked her, I was so pissed, so pissed. Why didn't she run? I don't understand why she was, um, you know, threatening. The, like, she was she was walking toward the um, the sheriff all threatening. I mean, I guess she didn't, she didn't expect that there would be somebody there who could stake her. I guess she thought, no, I'll, I, can, I can growl at this lady all I want and it'll be fine. But, you know, Damon, uh, it's one of those things. Where you have somebody with superpowers like Lexi and she didn't see Damon walk up. Like, does she have no peripheral vision? That's, that's an issue we have in Buffy a lot. It's like nobody in Sunnydale has any peripheral vision. But I guess you could say, well, she was injected full of vervain. So, eh, maybe. 
But, you know, it, it's one thing to say, well, she was impaired and Demon used his super speed to get the better of her. But he didn't. He was pretending to be human and he just walked up and staked her and what she didn't notice. Ah, I don't know. I, it made me want to stake the writers, to be honest. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> I'm just, I'm so fucking furious at Damon right now. Uh, and I feel really, really bad for Stefan. Aw. But yeah, you know what? He should have killed Damon a long time ago. That's clear. And he should have killed him in this episode. And I didn't understand why Elena was trying to talk him out of it. She said, I'm trying to save you. I guess she thinks that if he killed his brother, he wouldn't be able to live with himself. You know, he wouldn't be able to live with the the guilt. But I mean, it's the right thing to do. Damon, yeah, he's his brother, but he kills people on a regular basis. Not just the those people that we've met, you know, in Mystic Falls, like Vicky and... I can't even remember the other people he named. Um, And not just, you know, his best friend, but all the people that he's eating on a regular basis. He's a bad dude and he should be killed. But he's a main character, so he has plot armor. Uh, So it seems at the end there that Bonnie is having prophetic dreams. And is that Bianca Lawson? Oh my God. That woman is a real life vampire because she's looked exactly the same since the 90s. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm super into Bonnie. I'm super into what's going on with her and, uh, I hope she doesn't go dark or if she does, I hope it's, you know, not too bad. I don't know. I don't know. I just, I have a bad feeling anyway. So, um, I think that was Bianca Lawson and I think that that is her ancestor. So when she said it's coming or something's coming or something like that. Is that Damon? Is she referring to Damon coming after her for that amulet? And why does Damon want the amulet? Did I miss something? Do we know why he wants it? I thought that the when he tried to take the amulet off of Bonnie and it burned him, I thought it was the amulet was doing that. Like the amulet was burning him of its own accord. But... When Caroline tried to take the amulet off of Bonnie, it burned her. So I'm guessing that it's it's Bonnie doing it. But yeah, I want to know more about the amulet, what it does, and the prophetic dreams. If that's what's happening, that's really interesting. And I would like to see more of Bianca. Of course, she is, I know, Bianca Lawson from Buffy. And then I also know her from Dawson's Creek. So two of my favorite shows. Um, And yeah, the woman looks exactly the same. It's ridiculous. Okay, bye.